Projectile motion essentially consists of an object which is thrown either from ground level or from a higher level and it falls back to the ground. And the trajectory is a parabola like this. Now the object is, is thrown initially with an initial velocity which is denoted as u here. And uh, in order to tackle projectile motion problem, we're going to have to consider either the vertical component or the horizontal component at a time. In order to do this, we're going to have to apply our knowledge of vectors. That is, we're going to have to break down this velocity u into a horizontal component and a vertical component. For the horizontal component, we just have to close the vector, so that's u cos theta. And for the vertical component, it is u sine theta. Now we have to bear this in mind, that for any vertical motion that we're going to consider, we will have to use u sine theta as the initial velocity. And for any horizontal motion that we're going to consider, we'll have to use u cos theta as the initial velocity. First, we're going to find the time th to reach a maximum height. In order to do that, we will use the equation v is equal to u plus dt. Now, here it is important to mention that if in this direction u sine theta is positive, then gravity, which is always acting in this direction, we will take it as being negative. So let's replace in our equation. The final velocity at h is zero because here it is the maximum height. And the vertical component of the velocity at this point is zero. And the initial velocity considering vertical motion. So um, here we are considering vertical motion. So when we are considering vertical motion, it is just the velocity on the vertical component. Here, the object has a maximum velocity. So when it goes up, the velocity decreases, 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 and becomes zero, and then goes in this direction. Okay, so here, we see that the vertical component, so I'm going to write it V vertical, the final velocity vertical is zero, which is zero here. And the initial, we said, we're going to take it as u sine theta. I'm sorry, u sine theta. And the acceleration, which is g, we're going to take it as negative g. So this is negative g t. And t, of course, is the th. So rearranging, we get th is equal to u sine theta over g. From here, we can calculate the total, the total time taken for the whole trajectory. If the object takes th time to reach half the trajectory, then it's going to take th time to reach this part also. So at the end, we see that it is 2th. So the total time taken is 2th. When we replace th by this one, we get 2u sine theta over g. Now let's try to find the maximum height h reached by the object. Here again we consider the vertical motion and we see that at the maximum height the final vertical component is zero and the initial component was u sine theta. So here we're going to use the equation v square is equal to u square plus 2as. Now we see that the vertical component at h was 0. Final one, uh, the initial one was u squared, so we replace u by the initial here, which is u sine theta. So this gives me u square sine square theta plus 2. The acceleration was minus g, and of course, s is the height. Rearranging this, we get h is equal to u square sine square theta divided by 2g. Now we're going to try to find the range which is the distance r 
this distance here and this is along the horizontal component of motion and it is important to, it is important to note that g only acts on the vertical component of motion and it does not affect at all the horizontal component of motion so this u cos theta is going to be constant throughout the motion now by uh, for uh, convenience i'm going to draw how the speed the velocity varies at each point at all points along the trajectory the horizontal component of the velocity remains u cos theta now the vertical component changes because g is always acting downwards so if the initial velocity was along the vertical component was u sine theta and it is acted upon by a downward um, acceleration or a downward force the initial velocity decreases and decreases again and eventually at the top becomes zero but the horizontal velocity remains u cos theta and as it goes down the vertical component now increases but in the opposite direction and it hits the ground with the same velocity as it started here that is u sine theta but in the negative direction and the u cos theta is constant throughout the motion so finding range r here for the horizontal component there is it is not affected by acceleration g so along the horizontal, com the horizontal component we can see that the velocity is constant at u cos theta and for, for constant motion to find the distance r we use the simple formula distance is equal to velocity times time so r is equal to velocity which is u cos theta times the total time taken so this is u cos theta times the total time taken we already calculated here was 2u sine theta over g so that's 2u sine theta over g now from properties of uh, angles in mass 2 cos theta sine theta can be rewritten as sine 2 theta so this gives me u square sine 2 theta over g just a bit of an extension here we know that from the sine curve which varies like this we know that um, a sine has a great has the greatest value of one when the angle is 90 degrees probably why we say here that this value is going to be at its maximum which is one when theta is going to be 45 degrees so at 45 degrees this becomes sine 2 times 45 degrees which is sine 90 and it, it is at its maximum so at when the angle is 45 degrees then the range that is the distance the projectile will travel is larger probably why not probably but this is exactly why we ask athletes who, who are in the javelin to throw at an angle of 45 degrees because this is when the range is going to be the highest um, just in case we are asked to find the equation of the trajectory which of course is not of that importance um, to do that we just have to consider any point x y so here I just label this as being a point y1 and this being a point x1 now for the distance x1 as we already said that this is the horizontal component of velocity which is constant so this is we uh, consider the initial speed at which the projectile is being thrown as being u and the horizontal component here is u cos theta and the time taken i will take it as t so for a constant velocity it is just x1 equals u cos t now for y1 now bearing in mind that g is affecting the motion so negative g is acting here 
this one we're gonna use the equation s is equal to ut plus of at square and for the horizontal component we just used the formula that distance is equal to speed times time now replacing uh, the terms here in this formula we have y1 which is s is equal to u which we took in the previous example as being u sine theta dot t minus half g t squared now the g is a minus so i put t as minus g so that becomes minus half g t squared now i'm gonna rewrite this equation in terms of y x and theta that is substituting the value of t so here we have the value of t which becomes x1 over u cos theta and i'm gonna substitute this in this equation here so that becomes y1 equals u sine theta dot t which is x1 over u cos theta minus half g t square so that is x1 square over u square cos square theta rearranging this equation we get y for convention i'm just going to remove the y1 and x1 and simply write it as y and x that becomes y is equal to u u gets cancelled sine over cos this gives me tan so that gives me x tan theta minus g x square over 2u square cos square theta so this brings me to the end of this video and i hope you guys found it helpful and any questions will is most welcome in the comment section thank you